English as She is Wrote by Anonymous Chapter 3 Four Epitaphs A two's account of an untimely end is given upon a stone in the Mexican churchyard. He was young, he was fair, but the Injuns raised his hair. The following may be read upon the tombstone of Lottie Merrill, the young huntress of Wayne County, Pennsylvania. Lottie Merrill lays here. She didn't know what it was to be a fed, but she has had her last tussle with the bars, and they've scooped her. She was a good girl, and she is now in heaven. It took six big bars to get away with her. She was only 18 years old upon the tomb of a boy who died of eating too much fruit this quaint epitaph conveys a moral currents have checked the current of my blood and berries have brought me to be buried here pears have pared off my body's hardihood and plums and plum is spare not so one so spare fain i would fain my fall so fear a fear lessons not hate Yet tis a lesson good. Guilt will not long hide guilt. Such thin washed wear wears quickly, and its rude touch is soon rude. Grave on my grave, some sentence grave and terse. That lies not as it lies upon my clay, but in a gentle strain of unstrained verse. Praise all to pity a poor Patty's prey. Rehearses, I was fruitful to my hearse, tells that my days are told, and soon I'm told away. In Glasgow Cathedral is an epitaph which is engraved on the lid of a very old sarcophagus discovered in the crypt. Our lives are flying shadow, God's the pole. The index pointing at him is our soul. This the horizon when our sun is set, which will, through Christ, a resurrection get. In a graveyard at Montrose in Scotland, this inspiration may be seen. Here lies the body of George Young and all of his posterity for 50 years backwards. This brief announcement may be read in Wrexham Churchyard Wells. Here lies five babies and children dear, three at Ostry and two here. In a churchyard near London, the following may be deciphered. Killed by an omnibus, why not? So quick a death a boon is. Let not his friends lament his lot, for more's omnibus communis. There is an unqualified Hibernianism in the following. Here lies the remains of Thomas Maelstrom who died in Philadelphia March 17th. Had he lived, he would have been buried here. A good deal of positive information is conveyed in this epitaph. Here lies, cut down like unripe fruit, the wife of Deacon Amos Shute, she died of drinking too much coffee, Annie Domini, 1840. To the victim of an accident, here lies the body of James Hambrook, which was accidentally shot in the Pacis River by a young man with one of Colt's large revolvers with no stopper for the hand to rest on. It was one of the old-fashioned sort, brass-mounted, and of such is the kingdom of heaven. William Curtis, who was famous for his bad grammar, may have composed his own epitaph. Here lies William Curtis, our late Lord Mayor, who has left this world and gone to that there. In a churchyard in London, evidently written by a cockney, here lies John Ross, kicked by a hoss. In Trinity Churchyard, New York, this inscription may be read, Val, Sydney Breeze, June 9, 17, made by himself, ha! Sydney, Sydney, liest thou here? I lie here, to time's last extremity. Upon a stone under the grocer's arms is this inscription in memory of Gerard, a tea dealer. Garrett, some caught him, but that was to lie. His name was Gerard, who now here doth lie. Weep not for him, since he is gone before to heaven with grocers. There are many more. The value of phonetic spelling is set forth in this terse memorial. Here lies two brothers by misfortune surrounded. One died of his wounds, the other was drowned. Resignation and an eye to the main chance are combined in the following. Beneath the stone in a hope of Zion doth lie the landlord of the lion. His son keeps in the business still resigned unto the heavenly will. In a churchyard in Wiltshire, England, 
Beneath this stone lies our dead child who's gone away from we for evermore into eternity. When we do hope that we shall go to he, but him can never come back to we. On Mrs. Sarah Newman. Pain was my potion, physic was my food, groans was my devotion, drugs done me no good. Christ was my physician, knew what way was best to ease me of my pain. He took my soul to rest. An inscription to four wives. To the memory of my four wives, who all died within the space of ten years, but more particular to the last Mrs. Sally Horn, who has left me and four dear children. She was a good, sober and clean soul. May I soon go to her. Dear wives, if you and I shall all go to heaven, the Lord be blessed, for then we shall be even. William Joy Horn, Carpenter. On a dire, he died to live and lived to die. On Mrs. Lee and her son, in her life she did her best, now I hope her soul's at rest. Also her son Tom lies at her feet. He lived till he made both ends meet. At Edinburgh, John Macpherson was a wonderful person. He stood six foot two without a shoe and he was slew at Waterloo. One John Round was lost at sea and in the graveyard of his native place a stone was erected with the following couplet inscribed thereon. Under this bed lies John Round, who was lost at sea and never found. In an old churchyard in Ireland, here lies John Higley, whose father and mother were drowned on their passage to America. Had they lived, they would have been buried here. In a churchyard in Ohio, under this sod and under these trees, laughed the bod, E of Simon Peace. He is not in this hole, but only his pod. He shelled out of his soul and went up to his God. From a tombstone in Cornwall, England, father and mother and I lie buried here asunder. Father and mother lie buried here and I lie buried yonder. On Eliza Newman, like a tender rose tree was my spouse to me. Her offspring plucked too long, deprived of life was she. Three went before, her life went with the six. I stay with three, our sorrows for to mix. Till Christ our only hope, our joys doth fix. On a drummer in an English churchyard, Tom Clark was a drummer who went to the war and was killed by a bullet and his soul sent for. There were no friends to mourn him for his virtues were rare. He died like a man and like a Christian bear. On a stone near Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, Robert C. Wright was born June 26, 1772, died July 2, 1815. By the bloodthirsty hand of John Sweeney Sr., who was massacred with the knife, then a London gun discharge, a ball penetrate the heart that give the immortal wound. At Middleton, Connecticut, is the following. This lovely, pleasant child, he was our only one, although we've buried three before, two daughters and a son. The controlling power of rhyme is well illustrated in the subjoined from a tombstone in Manchester. Here lies, alas, more is the pity, all that remains of Nicholas Newcity, N.B. His name was Newton. Another instance of how rhyming difficulties may be overcome is as follows. Here lies the remains of Thomas Woodhen, the most amiable of husbands and excellent of men. N.B. His name was Woodcock, but it won't come in rhyme, his widow. The subjoined contains a solemn warning. My wife has left me, she's gone up on high. She was thoughtful while dying and said, Tom, don't cry. She was a great beauty, so everyone knows, with Hebe-like features and a fine Roman nose. She played the piano and was learning a ballad when she sickened and died it from eating veal salad. Upon a tombstone in Pennsylvania. Battle of Shiloh, April 6, 1862. John Deere was born March 26, 1839, in the town of West Dresden, state of New York, where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are at rest. A tombstone in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, has these lines. When you, my friends, are passing by, and this inform you where I lie, remember you, Elon, must have, like me, a mansion in the grave. Also three infants, two sons, and a daughter.